hope everything has been well. I know it's been a while. Today, you know, I intro it all the time like this, but today we're going to be doing a bit of, I'm going to label this one like a, kind of like a side trance or a trance or something that is very uh, chill. It's going to get lost in. We're going to be making this probably in under uh, eight minutes. I'm not going to be doing anything too tricky with geometry nodes or uh, using it at all. So let's just dive right on it. Okay, let's get this show on the road. So shall we? Um, so let's go ahead and just press A then press X and delete everything. We don't need all that stuff. What we're going to start off with is we're going to press Shift A. We're going to bring in a cylinder. And then before you click any further, make sure you click this little drop down in the bottom left hand corner. Put the vertices to eight. We only want eight sides here. Okay, now you have that. Let's go ahead and hold down tilde, make it on the top. Let's do press N so we can pop out this rotation. Let's do RX 90 degrees. So then I pressed R, then I pressed X, and I typed in 90, or you can type in 90 on this rotation panel right here. <clears throat> then as we're kind of like looking around the object, <clears throat> if you're wondering, I'm doing that, I'm pressing the middle mouse button. Um, you're going to press G and then Y and then hold control and you're going to drag it a little bit further. You want it to pretty much be right at the start. That's how we're going to get this bad boy to loop. Now, what you're going to do next is on the Z for dimensions, just make it 8. Now we're going to go ahead and repeat what we just did by pressing G and Y and holding down control. And then you have that. Okay. I'm going to rename my cylinder by pressing F2. I'm going to call this original loop object. Keep things clean, you know. Now I'm going to press tab, press 3. We're going to be on the faces mode. Select this face and then select the other face on the cylinder. Oh, by holding down shift. Sorry. Once you have that, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and bring in a camera. So go front view by holding down tilde. Now you're going to press shift A. what you'll see here if we hold down Z and enter wireframe you don't need to do this but you'll see the camera now now what we want to do is we want to create a pretty much a looping animation before we start really tinkering with stuff we want to make sure that things are ending in the right place and starting in the right place so you're gonna pull back I'm just gonna move this a little bigger so you can see you're gonna pull back the playhead to zero and what we're gonna do is we're gonna keyframe our camera going from this end to that end and the way you do that is what we're going to do is we're going to single keyframe the Y axis, go all the way to the end, 250, and then make it 8 meters. So that's the size of our object. Now, <coughs> if we went into view the camera and then do this, what you'll notice is it won't really feel much like a loop right now, but that's okay. Okay. Um, what we're going to go ahead and do is simply press M here and create a new collection. I'm going to call this loop, looping collection. Let me make that one green because I like green. And pretty much the way we're going to do this, and I'm going to hold off on jumping any further into that right now until we add the effects, but we're just going to be making duplicates going down this path. Okay. Now, the next step is we're going to be playing a bit with materials. So go ahead and right click the little divider and vertical split. We can bring this down a little bit more. Let's enter shader editor. Click on our cylinder here. Let's just view the camera. Let's go material preview so we can kind of see what's going on. And what you're going to do here is first step. Um, within the render properties. Make sure you have ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, and motion blur. We're going to be playing motion blur today. And real quick before uh, we do too much stuff here, make sure that your animation is set to default interpolation linear. It needs to be linear. If it's not linear, it's not going to look like a great loop. People are going to really know when it ends and when it starts. Okay. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a material to that cylinder. I'm going to call it cylinder material. Bring down the roughness. Bring up the metallic quite a bit. I'm just going to make it half. We'll see how we really like playing with this. Actually, I'm going to make the roughness like 0 0.1. Then what you're going to do is we're going to go ahead and exit that view. Go into the front, uh, I mean top view. Sorry. Wireframe. And we're going to pull in some lights here. So I'm going to make a light. Point light. I like the point light. And we're going to leave that. We're going to move it up a little bit. Like this. A little green light bulb icon. And we're going to start playing with some colors. We really just want to go around the color wheel. So I'm going to make like 50. I'm going to start with blue. Then we're going to go a little bit further down. Make it a little bit darker. Purple. Go a bit further down. Make it to like a red. This one's like a green, a bit further down, and then bring it to another like blue. Now, if you view the camera as a material preview or rendered, you can kind of start to see our thing developing. Now, we're gonna have to make a bit of some fine tuning here. You can kind of see uh, it's not like fully looking the way we want it to look. A few things <clears throat> one, you're gonna want to make sure the base color of your object is dark. Pretty much zero zero zero. The other thing is on your world property, you want to turn down the strength of that background light to zero. Now we just have complete darkness. Now you know we're seeing little balls and whatnot. We don't really want that. So the way you kind of mess around with that is you amplify the roughness. What are you doing now? You can kind of see the difference here. So we want to find a nice little hue. So zero point three is the one I'm gonna rock on. Personally, I feel like the lights could maybe be a bit stronger. So I'm gonna pump it up to like 100 each one. They're not, they're not feeling intense enough. And you can get creative with this. You know, there's a certain light, a certain co color combination that the brand that you're working on has. You can play around with that. <coughs> okay. <coughs> and you'll see now it's kind of going through. Now for the second part. So we have all our point lights. Now we want all the little um, particles to move through it as well. So I'm going to enter back into solid mode and I'm going to show you how to do this. So what I typically do is just duplicate the original loop object by pressing down Shift D. Uh, we're gonna rename this to particle. Oops, particle instance. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click the little like gra like line graph icon kind of thing, particle icon. I'm gonna call this just the particle system. A few things we need to set up. Uh, first things first. Within the frame start, you're gonna make that zero. Frame end zero and then lifetime make it 250 because that's the long that's the length of our thingy the volume use modifier stack distribution jittered is fine and doesn't really matter um few things few things physics none okay and then da, 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 last thing fuel weight gravity zero so to recap fuel weights gravity zero Physics, none. Make sure your frame start is zero, end zero, lifetime, same amount of frames as your animation. <coughs> now we're gonna play around with a bit more now, but that was just to get us started. Actually, one more thing before we really get started. With your particle instance, add a modifier that is solidify. And go ahead <coughs> and bring it up a little bit. And now you can increase the thickness here and you're gonna wanna pretty much allow some room in between your camera. Now you're like, what the hell's going on? Like I can still see all this stuff. What you wanna do to not see your object, but I like to see it for right now, so I'm gonna mess with it. 
go to render, I mean viewport display, and turn off show emitter. So do the same thing with render for now, just so you save yourself some time. And now what you'll see is, as we move through the animation, our camera doesn't get hit by any of the objects. So when we start adding objects in, things look great. God, I love a nice little morning coffee. I like to record these in the morning. Okay. Now, what we'll do next is we need to bring in our particle object. It's a really small cylinder kind of thing. So I'm bringing in a cylinder. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate X, bring it down a lot. You select it, keep making it smaller. And we're just gonna scale it on the Y axis and make it like a little line. Not too big. <clears throat> okay. I'm gonna call this our particle object. So these two sit together. I'm gonna add a little material to it. I'm gonna call it particle object glow. And I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the principle of BSDF and make it an emissions. Drag it, connect it. Something like 50. White is okay, in my opinion. <coughs> Actually, <coughs> sorry, my friends. Let's leave it with the principle BSDF. <coughs> mm, second thought. Let's just do it with the principle BSDF. It's fine. We will live. Okay. And when you're going to go back to your particle instance here, render as object, instance object, particle object. So what you'll see right now is our scale of our object is a bit small. If you click render, you'll see all the light. Now what we want to do is we want to fix the rotation here. What you'll do to do that is big rotation. And then I believe it is the object X axis. And now what you'll see when we go through it, a whole bunch of like white things great and then with this I played around a bit with it so last time um, I'll show you what I did just to keep things keep things exact that's kind of how I rocked it out but I did a HS HSL and I just made all of my particles like a bit of like a gradient uh, it's kind of a fucking it's kind of a fucking mess to be honest I'll leave it alone Okay, so now that we have our particles and we have our objects, one thing that I played around with was motion blur. Uh, I went ahead and pumped it up a bit and I brought it just so the way I test this is I bring the shutter up to like 0 0.8 and then I'll just like, okay, let's see that 0 0.8. I think that's okay for right now. We'll start testing it, but you're just going to be like rendering it out and seeing the individual's color management. I'm going to play around with <coughs> the contrast a bit too. Medium high contrast is cool with me. And one thing I did as well, I'm going to bring down the number of particle objects. It's a lot. It's a lot. A little much for my taste. Okay. We're moving on to some of the final steps here. Now, one of the things I also did was I brought in um, a UV sphere. Okay. Ah. Let's make this in solid mode. And I shrunk it down a bit. And I brought it down here. Let's bring us to the top. Let's do the camera. Okay, and what I did with my UV sphere to give it that like cool kind of effect, I just brought the roughness all the way down, brought the metallic all the way down. When you render it, now you're seeing a reflection. And then if I shade smooth, you see this complete like kind of cool kind of like uh, reflection of all the lights and stuff. Now I'm gonna call this reflection. Now what I did next 
is you want to parent it. Oops, 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 oops. Go back to the start of your animation. Make sure you get it a nice distance away. Me personally, you get it right at the end because you want it to loop still. And triple click and drag and hold shift. And you'll just set the camera as the parent. And now pretty much it'll move with it. And now here's the fun part. Here's where all of our pieces come piecing together, my friend. What you'll do, collection instance, looping collection, click and hold on Y and hold control, drag, shift D, hold Y and control, then shift R a few times, and you'll get yourself a nice little loop. Now, I forgot one last thing. That reflection sphere should not be living in the looping collection. And when you click play, you'll see we're moving through the colors. And what you want to make sure is that huh. oh, one thing I realized our particle object should give it a lifetime of two fifty one. Kind of being, it's being kind of funky, <clears throat> but you want to make sure is your last frame and your starting frame are exactly the same. So what I'm doing is I'm just holding down shift and pressing my right arrow key to jump, my right and left one. So you see that the start is the same and the same. It may look a little funky because of the lighting and whatnot, but I'm working on it. I'm call this one. Okay, so the last part is the compositing. I'll make this pretty simple for you guys. Okay, so first let's just make sure our output documents are set up properly. I'm gonna call this um, tutorial trippy tunnel dot mp4. Make sure our file format is set up to the mp4 format. Okay, and I'm gonna add in a viewer here. Reroute. Press V, bring it back a little bit. Then I'm gonna add a bit of lens distortion. Disperse it a little bit. Give it a little bit of jitter. And then I believe the last thing I did was I added a bit of that hue saturation value. This is something I'm I tested for it. Like I really didn't play with much around with last time, but you can see when you start changing the hues, you can get some interesting stuff. And don't worry about the colors. The colors are gonna change regardless. You can kind of play with the values. Just render it and you guys to see. Give it all some nice even numbers. And that's pretty much our animation, my friend. You could definitely get a bit crazier with it if you want. Like you can start throwing in, mm, I don't know about the pixelator, any crazy, too crazy to filter it, but you can really start doing some wild stuff. Like what if you posterized it? Like what the fuck are we looking at? You know, I, <laughs> and I suggest you do that with these projects, you know, play around with it. So I'm going to go ahead and render it. All my render settings are set up and I'll talk back with you guys. Bravo. You've done it. Fucking blender, you know. No big deal for you. Oh. <sighs> Congratulations. I think I said this at the end of almost every video. I think, you know, it's a big deal to be doing these uh, quote unquote creative exercises. So, you know, 
take what you have, share it with the world. I think not sharing it is an, an unjust service for yourself. Um, and feel free to tinker with it. Feel free to play around with the colors, get really crazy, add different types of reflections, putting uh, noise overlays, maybe jump into After Effects, play around with the glow, throw some text in front of it, you know, just play around. Um, and yeah, maybe I'll make a video later on. Um, let me know if you've made it this far to make a video on like where I get inspiration from. I think there's a lot of lessons out there. But thanks again for watching the video. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.